sure you've heard of Neuralink's new N1 chip that they recently implanted in officially patient zero. Now, we talked about how he was initially recovering, but now that patient has begun to use the Neuralink application called telepathy. And by telepathy, I don't mean moving things with your mind, but no, actually, that's what it is. That's what it is. Moving things with your mind. The first so, thing I thought of was the X-Men. Okay? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm Professor Xavier. You know, it's not science fiction anymore. It's becoming reality. So patient zero, as of now, is literally able to use the N1 chip in their brain to control cellular devices and, of course, your laptops, your PCs. That means he can move a cursor now with just his mind, a cursor, that's, you know, the mouse, the clicky thing on your screen. He can move that with his mind. He can type with his mind. So he can just look at a phone. He can just look at a screen. Uh, the, the keyboard pops up and he's typing. And he doesn't even have to use anything because, you know, most of the candidates for Neuralink are the chip, they are people who don't have use of their limbs. So, you know, it's an added advantage just to help them navigate through life more. But I'd like to hear your perspective, what you think, what you see it to be, and, you know, just a bit of a background of this whole neurotechnology and stuff. All right. Um, I think to start, let's break down what neurotechnology is in yes. the first place. Neurotechnology is any instrument that allows connection between technology and your nerves. So basically, it's anything that can read the, electro from the electrons from the nerves. Mm -hmm. So if you're breaking down the N1 chip, it's made, out of, um, six, it's made out of 64 wires, right, that extend from the chip itself. And each wire has about 16 electrodes on it. And we're talking about this wire being not even as thin as a hair strand. So it's thinner than what? a hair strand. It's thinner than a hair strand. It is. It is okay, it can't strand. be as thick as your locks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about one individual hair strand. So yeah, yeah, it's thinner than that, right? So that proved a challenge at first because no human surgeon was able to conduct that mm -hmm. kind of surgery. I mean, it's just impossible. So they then had to make an AI that would then be equipped with robotics mm -hmm. enough to be able to have a precision that can do such an op operation or such a surgery. So yeah, we passed that and yeah and then that we have the n1 chip so some of the if we're looking at a background on n1 we had some of the difficulties um such as health i think health was the main reason yes that stored the, the n1 chip yeah. in in terms of deployment because of, if recently um it's only recently approved by the fda but previously we had challenges such as um the lithium batteries that were within the n1 chip because it's supposed to last a lifetime yeah, so mm -hmm. which means there is no but charge. it's a rechargeable one this time it, it is but yeah. then you see the health that becomes with that is that how do you recharge it am i going to open up my scar and go for recharge and how often do you recharge it again like yeah. do i recharge it after every three years does that mean every three years i get there or do i just have a charging port in my head now and that just i think it's gonna go there i think it, I, I genuinely think it's gonna go there if not a charging port maybe some form of wireless charger like um like the hockey puck that goes with the Apple Watch. I call it a hockey puck. Like the puck, you just stick it on and, and it's then charging. If we have that now, we are going to have to look at even more health risks because mm -hmm. constantly, radiation. Having, constantly having radiation, constantly having electric, electric um, currents going to your brain, going, rather protruding through your skull and going into your brain is going to be something of a big challenge. So these are the th some of the things that um, Neuro Neuralink has to look at. Um, before they can actually fully uh, go to their next slot. So uh, as things stand, I think they're going to have, um, from what I understand, they're going to have one test subject, um, which is the, the person they have, and then they're going to wait until they can see how long is it going to be functional before it needs either a recharge or before it's something else happens. Yeah. And then from there, we can move from there. So I think as of now, we're going to be looking at one patient till the foreseeable future. Okay. What about mass producing it? How much is the Neuralink? Unfortunately, the Neuralink um, technology is quite expensive. Last I checked, it ranges around 8,000 euros to 10,000 euros just to implant it in someone. But the whole thing cost, um, the whole surgery would cost about 40,000 euros. So I don't, I don't see this being a worldwide yeah, solution. Yeah, I, I, I don't see it becoming a hit anytime soon because obviously not everyone is gassed up about putting foreign technology in their brain and then you're now gonna make people pay for something they don't really want which which is understandable but i'm we're looking at the perspective um, that we're saying 
let's say this foreign technology starts actually being helpful because if you look at some of the advantages or foreseen advantages of having the Neuralink at um, prediction of brain tumors or any brain related illness that might happen. Konapo Konapo, Ipa Poi Papo Prime, DSTV Channel 294, the place to be.